Hey guys, welcome back to Slow Travel Chronicles. My name is Stephanie and we are here at Mammoth Cave National Park. I haven't been here for at least 30 years, so I'm excited to go back and check it out. Let's go. That's cool. What's that showing what the inside of the cave looks like? It's 150 miles of 400 that have been mapped. You can see all the yellow. That's what's mapped? Yeah. So our tour starts at 10 o'clock. We're here at the uh, Shelter B. There appears to be at least 50 to 70 other people that are taking the tour with us. A bunch of little kids, and there's a lot of stairs, and we're gonna take these buses to the Drips and Domes tour. Domes and Dripstones? D domes and Dripstones, something like that. I failed even though we'd had a conversation to wear long sleeve anything or pants, so hopefully I won't freeze my tail off. So for our tour today, we are going to load up on these buses here behind me and they're going to take us over to the entrance of the cave that we're going to use today. As we're going to start heading underground naturally as we make our way into the cave. But unlike some of our tours where we sort of gradually make our way down at the midpoint of the tour and then back out, this one we're pretty much heading straight down to our lowest point at the beginning of this tour. What's going to happen is we're going to go through a sort of narrow hallway for about 20 feet and then we're going to be following the route that water has been carving down into the ground, down about 250 feet. As we do, we're going to go down about an equal amount of stairs. It's fairly narrow. I would say a lot of parts of the passageway are no more than about four feet wide. There's also a passage behind us, a passage over here to the side, which is where our Grand Avenue tour actually pops out, and then the passage that we're going to take up here behind us. So a number of ways in and out of this room. Very appropriate. And it was given that name by the gentleman who discovered this cave, a gentleman named George Morrison. <coughs> now, George, now, at that time, Mammoth Cave was still privately owned. We didn't become a national park until 1941. And it was owned by the Mammoth Cave Estate, who owned a small chunk of property, mostly around that historic entrance to the cave over there behind the visitor center. He thought it was a little unusual that they hiked for miles along those cave passages on that old Mammoth Cave tour, which they've been doing since 1816 over there. They've been doing it for almost 100 years by the time George even got to this area. But George found it strange that with that little bit of property and those miles of cave, there was no way that all of those passages were purely underneath Mammoth Cave's property. And that was a big deal because around here, you own the cave rights to any land beneath you. And in our case, that even means that there are parts of Mammoth Cave today that stretch beyond the borders of the National Park. And those areas are privately owned by whoever owns that land on the surface. But George, at that time, saw that as an opportunity. He knew that probably Mammoth Cave was trespassing underground to other, past, uh, other properties around them. And if he could find one of those properties and locate a cave entrance of his own, he could set up his own cave tours and start competing with Mammoth Cave. So perhaps he could make some money from something underground after all. What? 
That's pretty cool. Water that flowed into this part of the country would make its way down into those sinkholes, and in some places, like where we came in, it would just simply dissolve and carve its way through that limestone straight down into the ground. But over most of Mammoth Cave, there's actually about 50 feet or so of sandstone and shale above us. The ancient ocean that formed all of this limestone where we were at about 300 million years ago, as it retreated, formed a huge river delta, kind of like the Mississippi River, and all of that sand and silt turned into that sandstone and shale above us. And that's actually quite beneficial because that effectively is a protective roof over the cave. Water cannot carve directly down through it, so that prevents the formation of things like big sinkholes and like collapsed parts of the caves here. Yeah. Around, you can see all the walls to the sides of us are all those broken bedding planks. Whereas if this had been carved smoothly by the water, you would expect nice smooth walls. And in reality, those smooth walls are here, they're just down below us. We are actually standing on about 30 feet of what we call brain marrow. If you look around to my side, you'll see all these rocks scattered everywhere. We're basically standing up on the pile of rubble that collapsed down into this passage once that river was gone. The good news is, though, that happened hundreds of thousands of years ago. So those rocks fell quite some time ago. But also, these caves, in a way, kind of self-stabilize themselves. Sounds strange, but it happens. No, go ahead. It's fine. I hope you like this week's video. Come back each and every Thursday to see where our adventures take us. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, do all of the things. It really does help our channel out. And check out our blog at slowtravelchronicles.com. I hope you have a great week.